What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and we have, in my opinion, arguably the best running back at the FCS level with us today. We got our guy Malik Grant from Sacred Heart. Running back was the NEC Offensive Player of the Year, top five in rushing this year, first team all NEC American, also was an FCS All-American selection this year. So Malik, man, appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's a it's a great pleasure, great honor. For sure, man. So real quick, before we get into your, just your ridiculous season this year, man, let's go back to high school. People don't know, man. You were doing this before you got the Sacred Heart. Your senior year, you were averaging almost 10 yards per carry for the entire season, man. So walk me through your recruiting process, a little talk a little bit about your high school career and what what the whole process was like for you. Uh Definitely. In high school, it was definitely slow at the start on um, the recruiting process for surely. But, you know, I just always kept a low head, just going to work, making sure I'm focused on what I have to do to help the team and just taking coaching and learning and just playing football. For To be honest, I got hurt early on in the season, rolled my ankle first game. After that, I was on a mission to come back and just help the team try to win the championship. And that's what I did. I came back, helped my team in, in as many ways as possible, and we ended up winning the championship that year. But recruiting was definitely slow. Uh, I thought it would pick up, but it was still slow. But I trusted God's process, no matter what it was. And at the end of the day, it got me some offers towards late, late, late after the season. And here I am at Cigar University. You know, I'm very blessed to be here. For sure, man. A lot of teams I know watching – you progress into your game are really regretting not giving you that shot. Now I know a lot of coaches are like, man, we really missed. And so talk a little bit, what led you to sacred heart? What was their recruiting pitch to you? What was it about the program that led you to commit there? Uh, what led me to sacred heart was really just that uh, my coach that was recruiting me, coach Mike cook, the defensive coordinator. He's an amazing person. Like when he comes to recruit, when he, when I see him, like he literally daps me up, like, he treats me like I'm family, like I'm already at the school when I was living in high school, you know. Like, he talks to me about just life in general. He made me feel like he wasn't just a coach, like, just recruiting me. Or I just want you to come and play football. He, like, treated me like I was literally, like, one of his brothers or, like, one of his kids or something. Like, it was just a great thing to just feel like someone wanted me there. Like, it made me feel like I really belong here. And, like, he helped me and, like, gives me steps and direction. And it wasn't a thing where, like, all right, I want you to come to our school only. Like, like he would like really have my back and say, "You gotta go with, do what's best for you and everything." And just coming to the school, it's a great environment. It's great people around, and it was just amazing, you know. And they also had great running backs here in Julius Chestnut and Jordan Meacham, um, and so on, you know. So it was just a great running, running, running school as well. And everything just drew, drew me to the program. But Coach Mike Cook definitely. He was the head of the snake to really get me in. Like, I really appreciate him for everything. For sure. And you mentioned that running back room, and that was actually my next question about what was the culture like coming into that running back room? You mentioned Julius Chestnut, an All-American, also was one of the top rushers in the FCS just a year prior. Yourself, there was that for, like there was probably four or five deep at that running back room. What was the culture like in the room? How competitive was it? And how did you guys all find your own lane in such a packed room? Uh, the culture in the room was definitely amazing, to be, like, to be honest with you. When I was coming in, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know how I was going to go. But when I came in and went into that room, everyone treated me like I've been there before, like I was their brother, like, you know. Uh, I used to ask Jordan Meacham and Julius, I used to ask them, like, to go over plays with me. They would literally drive from their houses to come to my freshman dorm and, like, help me go over plays, sit with me for about 30 minutes, you know. Like, I really appreciated them for that. Like, the culture in that room was amazing. Everyone jokes around. Everyone helps each other. Like, we're all on the field. If someone doesn't know anything, you can ask one of them a question, and you know you're going to get an answer. And you know they're going to put you in the right direction, put you on the right path to make sure you know what you're doing and be successful. So that was really a great, great thing to have. And the culture in that room was amazing. The coaches that we have at the running back position, our coach, Andrew Barboza, you know, He's an amazing coach. He pushes us every day. He's strict with us, make sure that because he expects very big things out of us. So the culture in that room is amazing. It's very gritty, fun, happy, family-like culture. 
And this year, man, this was really your breakout season. You know, Julius had a breakout year just just a season back. You came in, man, top five in rushing, just absolutely. I mean, you had a stretch, man, where I was looking. You rushed for like 180 plus for like four straight weeks, five touchdowns. I mean, it was crazy. What did it mean to you to be named the offensive player of the year for the conference? Uh, really, I mean, afterwards, after the season, everything, when I really did get the accolade, the award, it meant a lot because, like, it just showed how much, like, how much work I put in. Like, it just showed myself, like, you really did work hard for this. And look at you, like, you're getting what God probably meant to give to you, you know? So it meant a lot. But in the moment, it really didn't mean anything just because of the fact that I was just so invested in trying to do everything I can to help the team. Like, I was just worried about making sure I do everything that I have to do right and any extra thing that I could do to help the team to succeed, you know, because it's all about the team at the end of the day. And just making sure that I learned from Juju when he was on the sideline every day, making sure I learned from our coaches whenever they talk to me and tell me something, because at the end of the day, I could never be too good. I could always get better at, at something. So it was really just about that. But it was a very, very amazing, surreal thing to get that award, and I was very excited for it. Man, you you deserved it, and I know you're looking to go back to back this upcoming season. But you guys also went back to back this year, man. Back to back NEC champions. For you, what made this team special, and what did it mean to you to be? I believe this is only the second time Sacred Heart has ever went back to back in conference championships. So, what did that mean to the team, and how did you guys get it done? Uh, I think it meant a whole lot to the team to go back to back, especially this season. Because we definitely went on a skid where we lost about like three games in a row, I think. So it definitely meant a lot, like a, a lot, because we came together. We had a team meeting, and, and like we all like really heard each other out. We like spoke on each other's behalf. We like told each other what we think we could do better. We made sure we kept it real with each other because we're all grown men at the end of the day. And when we did that, we came together. We all started playing for each other again because that's what we've been doing from prior years. So we all started playing for each other again, not in, as individuals. And, man, it means so much for us to go on that, like, eight-game winning streak and then win the NEC championship again in the same year, in the calendar year. That was amazing. So it meant a lot this season. And it meant a lot as well because, you know, Juju was obviously going to the draft. So I was just excited that he was able to come back and I would be able to play with him. <laughs> like, it was amazing that I was be able to play with him and contribute while he's contributing too. Like, it was just amazing. And I mean, you guys were probably for me looking at it from from a I think one of the best one two duos in the FCS by far. And for you guys, everyone knows it's different playing with a target on your back. And you guys are the back to back NEC champions. Is there any pressure to be the first group of guys to have a three peat as NEC champions for Sacred Heart? Man, to kind of talk about playing with that target for you guys. How much responsibility do y'all feel to make that happen? Uh, honestly, I don't think it's really any pressure. I think we just need to stay to ourselves, like stay together, play as brothers and play as one team, as one unit on offense, defense, special teams, on every in every aspect of the game. And just play, like, come out every single day, every Saturday on game day and compete and be our best selves, and we would we would win another championship. We would, we would have a three-peat. Like, we, we shouldn't worry about anyone else and what everyone else is doing. Worry about ourselves, come in every day to practice in our meeting rooms and stuff, get better at watching film, get better in practice and in indie and everything, every aspect of what we could do and come out on Saturdays and handle our business and do what we do and play as brothers and we'll be fine. I don't think it's any added pressure. Hey, man, I love the mindset. And just to put it out there, guys, I did pick Sacred Heart to win the NEC again, man. I, I, I'm i riding with you guys again, man. I I see it happening. And, and behind the scenes, man, your head coach is one of the best at the FCS level. Your coach, Mark Martin Offrey, for you, what makes him so special? And what, what is his relationship like with you guys behind the scenes? Uh, what makes Coach No so special? Uh, just, I mean, one thing I could say that – could show that it made some really special is the championship game at LIU this season. Uh, he was in a hospital literally the night before uh, fighting, like, something in the hospital. And he literally came to the game, like, made sure he was at the game, literally sick, made sure he was at the game, on the sideline, could barely move and anything. He was there supporting us, coaching us, 
and like sharing a song and making sure that everyone is doing what they have to do. Like literally like just looking at him being there and seeing how much he fought. Like I gave him a hug after the game and it was just like an amazing thing just to know that he's always gonna be there for us. Like behind the scenes, he's an amazing person. He'll joke with us, like he'll tell it, he'll be straight up with us. And he'll, t he'll tell us we need to get our act together, this and that. Like it's just an amazing person to have as a head coach. And he's literally one of the best at the FCS level. He's the best at what he does, you know? So it's great to have a guy like that. For sure, man. I mean, hey, behind every great team, and there always has to be a great coach. And so for you, going into this season, man, you have all the accolades behind your name already, man. Offensive Player of the Year, All-American, two-time champion. What? How are you looking to follow this up, man? What are your personal goals for the 2022 season? Uh, Personal goals? Uh, I mean, I don't really like to speak on it too much, but, I mean, definitely a goal that I've had, goals that I've had – written down and set for myself for this season is definitely I'm definitely trying to rush for at least two thousand yards on however many carries I'm able to get, you know. Definitely try to rush for twenty plus touchdowns. Definitely help my team in every aspect I can. Like that's the that's one goal that I really, really wanna accomplish, really wanna focus on is help my team in every way possible. Catching the ball, running the ball, blocking, like definitely blocking and definitely um making sure I I get way better at in pass pro, like that's one goal I've been been hard on myself on and definitely trying to work out on definitely winning another championship for surely. We definitely need another championship. Uh, definitely try to get first team All American this year because I mean I got third team and I definitely want first team because you know what's better than for, what's better than first. I mean <laughs> you know and definitely repeat offensive player of the year, first team All NEC. There's all that. Man, man, for sure. Listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like calling out other media, but that that's a snub. I don't get to, I don't get a vote, but that was a snub. Third team's kind of ridiculous when you look at the season you had. So, kind of got your back on that one. But I know the senior answer, man. I know the senior answer is the first game is or the next game is the most important. But for you, looking at the schedule next year, is there a game that you have circled that you're like, we're gonna have something to prove that game? Um, I have circled. I don't really – I mean, we, we were supposed to play Bryant, but they left our conference, so. Yeah. So it was that – we definitely were a little hurt that they left our conference right when we were supposed to play them. And that was going to be like, <laughs> well, homecoming, I think. So that was definitely a game that we were looking forward to. But I don't think – I don't think it's a game that I'm looking at going into the season where I'm like, all right, like I have to prove a point to these people. I think I'm looking at every game head on where it's like – I got to come out here and play my best brand of football every single game to help the team. Like, No matter what it is, I don't have anything to prove to them. I have something to prove to myself, my teammates, and making sure that I play the football that I know I could play to my best ability and even greater beyond to make sure that we get a win every single game and try to win another championship. Hey man, I like the motivation and always like asking this, especially to players that are coming to the end, you know, more mature to their career and coming into their junior senior year. For you looking back, how has your game evolved? Compare the Malik Grant I'm talking to now to the Malik Grant who stepped on campus as a freshman. Uh, how my game has evolved from then to now, I definitely say uh, I've become a lot more patient. Like when I take a hand off. Just seeing and letting everything sort out, I become a lot more patient. Uh, pass blocking, I definitely say I became way better at pass blocking, and it's even more greater things to come in the pass blocking game for me. Uh, catching the ball wise, I, I catch the ball a lot more now as well. Um, and just my football IQ, just like my mental, just knowing, just seeing things and recognizing things and just reading stuff out, and just you know becoming even stronger, faster, more physical, like not being physical at times, just being physical at every moment I'm on the field, like no matter what it is, don't let anyone, and never letting one person take me down. Uh, so just all that stuff, like just football in general, like overall, and also I'll say school-wise as well, um, coming in as a freshman, I didn't really know what to do, you know, so. It was really, it was tough a little bit, but 
the growth from then to now is amazing. I'll say I think it's very great. Like I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm on top of all my work, football wise and school wise, and I think it's an amazing thing to be on top of your work and stuff. So, just everything in general. It definitely is, man. I know the I know the coming from high school to college, man. The off the field stuff is really the growing point for a lot of student athletes. So. For you, man, I love player comparisons, man. So I got to ask you, out of the NFL today, man, which NFL player do you feel like you model your game after the most? Today? Uh, I mean, so a lot of my teammates, like, try to say I'm like Alvin Kamara. So I, I'll take that. i say that. <laughs> but I don't really I, that like, that's a good comparison, though, man. Really, I don't really, like, compare myself. But I do like a lot of people, though. But I take the Alvin Kamara comparison for surely. Hey, man, I, I can definitely see it, man. He was a monster when he was over at Tennessee. And, yeah. you know, the the off every offensive guy I've had on here always says the defensive guys are the ones that talk the most trash. So I know you've heard it a lot in your career, man. But for you, how much of a trash talker are you between those white lines on the on game day? Uh, to be honest, I don't talk trash. I'm that I'm the type of player where. When I'm on the field, I know what I have to do. I know what I'm doing. I just put my mouthpiece in and get to play, and I just play football. I let I let what I, I let my actions speak. Like I don't use my words. I just let my actions speak. You know, because speaking, I think me trash talking, it doesn't throw me off my game. It's just like it's just not in my element because I'm just so locked in. I'm focused on beating the other guy on the other team and making a play and like trying to score. It's like there's no point in me trash talking, especially if I'm cook, kicking, cooking you. You know, there's no point in me like <laughs> even talking trash. I let my actions on the field speak. Man, you know, it, it's kind of hard to talk trash at the end of the game when they look up and they see your 200 yards and two touchdowns, and they're like, "Yeah, I can't really." Can't say nothing to him. I mean, he just scored on us the whole game. And for you, man, you don't have to give away all your secrets. I know that NEC defensive players are tired of seeing you in the open field, but if it's you and a linebacker in the open field, what's the number one mistake they can make against you? <laughs> the number one mistake they can make against me? Uh, I don't really know. All I know is that one person, I'm not going to let that one person tackle me at all. It's never going to be that one person. That's all I know. You got to get the – hey, you better hope your teammates are, are pursuing the ball because it's going <laughs> to be over. I, I love it, man. So we'll give a little bit of credit, man. Who who are some of the – or who is the best defensive player you've ever had to go up against where at the end of the game you're like, he was a headache all day long? Best defensive player? Man, it was a lot of – it was a lot of great defensive players that I played against. Um – Uh, I mean, one of them, one of them I can say is probably um this kid Titus Leo from Wagner. He's a, he's like six six, two seventy five, like <laughs> yeah. long. Like he's like he's he's really good. Like a problem. He's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah, he is. Hey, man, I, I, I'll I'll take that, man. I know exactly what you're talking about a stud, and for you, man. You know, Julius is kind of setting that standard where now Sacred Heart has that pipeline to the NFL, man. There's a long line of successful running backs. And I'm expecting Malik Grant to be the next name in the upcoming years in that draft. So if an NFL franchise asks you what they're going to get in Malik Grant, if they draft you next April or the April after, what do you tell them? Uh, if they were to ask me that, I'd definitely be like, you're getting a guy who's ready to come in and sit down and make sure he takes all the knowledge in that he get ready to work, ready to grind every single day out, never take any shortcuts, just ready to like really learn everything, like learn the process, learn the game even more and try to get better every single day, at every single thing. Just love to take in coaching and just want to help the team win in every aspect, no matter what it is, no matter if I'm on special teams, if I have to start on special teams, if I have to do any, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm just ready to come in, work, um, soak in all the knowledge that they could give me and just ready to go to work and try to make the team even better than what it is and try to imp make an impact in whatever any way possible.
Hey, man, I love it. So last question here, man. The season's quickly approaching. Just got through spring practice and everything. What is, what is your message to those Sacred Heart Sacred Heart fans out there that are looking forward to the season? What what can they expect from you, man? What's the message to them um, coming into the 2022 season? Uh, the message to them really would just be um, that we, the team, me and the team, we all appreciate them and love them, love the support and the, who they are. Uh, we can't wait to see them um, at campus field on game day. It's an amazing atmosphere, amazing experience, and it's very, very, very big things to come this season from the whole entire team. Um, and they won't be disappointed at all. Hey, man, I'm excited. Listen, I'm looking forward to that third NEC championship. And also, man, I'm looking for Sacred Heart to make a big playoff run this year, man. I'll be rooting you guys on. And we had our guy uh Javin Adderley on last season before before the year, man. And he 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 told me y'all were gonna go get that second one, and y'all yeah. did, man. So this is all about promoting the players, man. So let them know where they can find you on social media, where they can contact you for NIL deals, man. Any shout outs, anything you want to say, Malik, this time is yours. Uh on Instagram, you can follow me at, at Showtime Leak. And um, on Twitter, you can follow me at Humble Malik too. Uh, for any NIL deal stuff like that, you can email me at Malik Grant M <laughs> at Grant Malik zero two nine at gmail dot com. Uh, that's really it. Hey, man, listen, I appreciate you coming on, man. I was real excited about this one. I know everyone can't wait to hear what you have to say. But, guys, go follow Malik on all social media. The bigger his platform gets, the bigger and better brands and deals are going to reach out to him. And stay tuned for an already explosive career to have a, have a follow-up season next year, another NEC Offensive Player of the Year, and much more. But, guys, for Malik, myself, and the Blue Bloods, we are out for right now.